Hi, welcome back to Victory's Volkswagens. So while we're waiting for Keller's uh, OBD1 2 liter engine for him to get parts for it, we are going to work on the Alltrack today. So this is a 2017 Golf Alltrack. Uh, my wife and I bought it in 2017, owned it ever since. It's been a great car. We have literally had no problems with this car. I think there was a coolant leak when it was under warranty and uh, took it to Volkswagen. They fixed that. Uh, the only other thing that I've ever done anything to this car is the windshield washer pump went out two or three weeks ago and replaced that. Um, but we are having an issue now and um, I think I've diagnosed it down to the motor mounts. So. About two months ago, I changed the DSG fluid in this. Uh, I've done it before, did it exactly the same way by the book. And I noticed about a week after that the shift seemed kind of abrupt from a stop to start. And I thought, well, maybe just the clutch packs are grabbing, there's new fluid, and um, just something with the new fluid was making the clutches grab a little bit harder. But as the weeks had gone on, that started to become a worse and worse, more abrupt um, from stop to start, especially in a parking lot where I'd back up, put it into first. It almost felt like there was like a delay and then it would go into gear. And I thought, hmm, man, maybe there's something wrong with the dual mass flywheel, something's going on. Did a little bit of research online and uh, stumbled onto a video where a gentleman was showing bad motor mounts and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to check that out. So I did that and I'm pretty sure it's the transmission mount, almost hundred percent. It's the transmission mount. And I'll show you after I take a few parts off what the engine's doing and why I think that's the problem. So, uh, this 2017 all track is tuned with a Unitronic stage one. It is, uh, so the stock power on this uh, particular car is uh, 170 horsepower, 185 foot-pounds of torque, and with the Stage 1 tune, which is just software, no turbo down, down pipe, turbo or anything, it is now 242 horsepower with 273 foot-pounds of torque. So it's a big increase for $750.00 takes 20 minutes uh, very impressive so that's where the all tracks at and uh, I'll move forward on to some of the parts that I got for this it's really hot today we live here in Oregon just about 50 miles south of Portland and the other day it was 40 degrees and raining and today it's 90 degrees <laughs> and hotter than heck so if you if I start pouring sweat it's because it's 90 degrees out that door. All right, so these are the two motor mounts. This is motor mount for the engine, left side. You see that one here. This is the transmission mount underneath here. Uh, started trying to find some of these. Prices can be kind of steep. Um, went to Volkswagen's website. Theirs were, you know, not crazy expensive, but way more expensive than I wanted to spend. So I was able to find these two mounts, which are OEM Volkswagen mounts. This one, these are from Rock Auto. This one was $63.97. This one was $72.97. And they are, and I'll um, post on the show notes, I'll post the um, uh, the part numbers for them. So, VB Bilstein, and these are actually Volkswagen part numbers on the box. I'll take pictures of them and I'll post it on the show notes. So, a really good deal on the motor mounts. And then, um, the bolts for these are torque to yield, so they're one-time use. And, I was having a hard time finding them online. I found a couple ID parts, I think that's the name of it. ID parts had them for like 
I'm gonna say $59.99 for all the bolts. That might have been for one side. Could have been for both sides, not sure. And I was like, man, it's so expensive for those. And for those that aren't used to torque yield bolts, these can't be reused because when you torque the bolts down, they actually stretch a little bit. And I did a little bit of research on that because I was like, hmm, you know, maybe you can reuse them, but you know, maybe Volkswagen wants you to buy new ones or the manufacturers want you to buy new ones. Um, but I think basically from what I found on all the forums and on YouTube is that when you torque them down, they stretch. And what that does, it's not so much just for the torque of the bolt, but the stretch keeps them tight and they don't seem to have Loctite on them, but the, the stretch of the bolt is what keeps them tight so they don't unthread. So super important. So I did track those down. So I was seeing bolts. I saw one bolt on eBay. A guy on eBay was selling one of these bolts. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the bolt right here. It's crazy. This particular bolt right here. I don't know if you can see that. So me and Keller are doing this channel. Just a side note. We are trying to make these videos with one cell phone. And if we start doing more, we're going to improve our cameras. So please forgive me if <laughs> the video image on this is kind of crappy, but we're, we're just going to do what we can. So this bolt on eBay, $24.99 for one bolt. And then many other ones were $12.99. For one bolt five i think the cheapest i found was 5.99 for one bolt and i'm just like are you kidding me so scoured the internet got on the forums i found them at volkswagen believe it or not at at the dealership and you're not going to believe this all the bolts to mount these one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve bolts 12 bolts for $14. Some of them are 98 cents each. <laughs> so I will be posting all this in the show notes. I'll have some pictures of this and then you guys can go get these deals like I did. So for total for the mounts at uh, Parts Geek, $150 for the two mounts. $14 for the nuts. So I've never done motor mounts on a Mark 7 before. I watched a couple videos so that I kind of have an idea what was going on. So I'm going to reposition the camera. Um, I'll show you what the motor was doing and why I think it's the motor mounts for sure. And then uh, I'll go ahead and start disassembly and we'll do the repair and I'll try to film as much as I can. So. All right, thank you very much, and uh, here we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started on dismantling everything, getting out of the motor mount, and then I'm going to rock the car back and forth, and you'll see how bad the motor mount is. So, first thing we need to do, and if you don't have one of these, these are the special pliers for removing these. You can get these on Amazon. This is a cheapie. It's nothing fancy, but it definitely helps. What it does is that cup on this side grabs that, Let's grab this and it's got a little ratchet and it holds it open and you can just slide it back. Be careful with, with these. You don't ever want to slide one of these back and then release it because it'll crush this stuff. So if you're going to get it off, you can always get it into a hard plastic. But this one can just kind of sit there for now. So you can just pop that off. These clips, just grab it two places right here. I hate these Volkswagen clips. This car is pretty new, but when these get old, like my son's 2010 Golf, these are a nightmare. One thing you can do is if these go bad, they clip right here. You can hold this, get something to grab, and you can pull up right on each side where it snaps, and then you'd be able to free it. It's hard on the bottom of a place like that, but. I hate those things. I don't even know why Volkswagen still uses those stupid things. They're dumb. Okay, now I'm going to take the air box out. And so you don't need to remove any screws or the air filter or anything like that. This whole box comes out. And one thing I wanted to show you guys, kind of a cool little hack, 
is I'm starting to use more of these. My grandson like turned me on to these. I've been kind of a hand wrencher for years. I'm kind of old school. And then I start seeing everybody in the last like 10 years, mechanics using, you know, this is just a, a small impact, but like a three eighths impact, half inch. So I'm gonna invest and get more of them because I'm tired of using the air tools. They've worked great for me for 30, 40 years, but it's time to modernize. Now this little bit here, is off of you can get these at Home Depot anywhere and I think these are T25 if I'm not mistaken I don't think it's written on there pretty sure T25 these are what they use for deck screws it's a T25 almost any modern deck screw that you go and go to Home Depot they're gonna have this people just don't use Phillips anymore and then a little impact like this you just slip right in these are for removing like the belly pan earlier I was showing you you can remove these screws with it this is great. It's got a little ratchet in it, so once it hits its right torque, it just stops. So, yeah, if you have a bunch of these bits, you can get a bunch of them. They're, they're great for this. Okay, and this box has these two plastic rubber holders. You pull those up, and then this whole thing, kind of, it catches right here where the air comes in. And then there's, you, you kind of just pull it kind of like that. And it's the same way you get it in. It's got this funky weird air hose. And I'm not sure, it's got a little breather plate on there or something, or it's just plug. It's for a different application. But that's what will get you caught when you pull this out. Battery. Okay, we got two times. And some of this, I'll just go ahead and use to use an old school ratchet for, in case that's all you guys have. Negative always off first. Oh, nope, that was positive. Oop. No, listen to me. Negative always off first. Enough of you folks. Tuck that out of the way. And then 13 to pull the battery down. This is forward. Now we gotta take this tray out right here. And you can use either a 10 millimeter or a Torx. I think I found the Torx for that. Let me see. Um, not sure. Let me see. That one's beautiful. Ten, tens work. So we'll go ahead and use tens. This is when you want to be using that little impact for this kind of stuff. Goes a lot quicker. And then there's a tin right here. And this one. You don't need to take all the way off. Just loosen it. Get right to the end of the bolt. That's probably enough. And there's a little thing that's sandwiched on here. It's this little piece right here. Just pry that up. Get that out of the way. And down here is another tin. This one's hard to get to, and this is when I try to use a little torx. I don't know if it was a triple square or torx. Quite torx. Um, let's see. To this side? Let's see. Yes. Okay. 
This is, let me come back here and say, let me grab an extension. And I gotta get my glasses. This is a T30, T30. So down here is a funky little spot where this T30 goes down in here. It's hard to get into this one. But it's easier to get a torx on here than a tin in this. I don't know why they designed it this way. There's an adjustment for the headlight. It's a little plastic when it comes out. And it's just stupid. Okay, we get a magnet. Push that out with a magnet. I wish I had more close-ups, guys. I just I don't have a close-up. But once you start doing this, it's pretty obvious what's going on. Okay. So then, you know, this, you have to pull this wire back. Get this. And it just comes right out. Oh, one last thing. I forgot to. There is this little thing that's clipped on here. And if I remember right, I think you just press that. Yeah. So right here is a little button. It's kind of hidden in there. You press that, this thing just slides right out. You can see how it slides in, it slides right out. Okay, so now we've got the motor mount exposed. Make sure I'm still recording. Okay. All right, so now we got to remove the computer. And these things are kind of getting back to it. Right off. It's this little lever. You can see what it does here. It's like a gear. And you just put it down to that position and then the thing will unplug. Tuck it in every day. And try to take it out of the way. So this one. That is caught. You just pull up on that, this comes out. Then you can remove this one the rest of the way. Oops, wrong way. There we go. All right, so now we've got this contraption, two tins. It's really hot here today, where it's usually 50 degrees, 60 degrees this time of year, it's 90 degrees today. Crazy for where we live here in the Pacific Northwest. Unusual weather. For me, so if I start dripping sweat, it's 90 degrees outside the door. And I don't have a fan. Okay, so there's one of the tins. By the way, the other one right here. And then, uh, before I get too ahead of myself, I'll show you why I'm taking all this apart. I'm still recording, yes. Okay. Okay. So if I rock this back and forth, you'll see this mount move right here. I think the let me see if the brakes on. No, the brakes not on. Let me see if you guys can see that. Yeah, I think you can see it. What I'll do is zoom in. Hopefully you guys can see that. Oop, and now my hood is coming down. But yeah, I mean, look, look at the, the mount. You can see it, just tons of play, especially in the forward movement. So that's what the problem is. And this, I think I could have just gotten away. Oop, yeah, this hood's coming down again because my light's on here. Uh, I could have just probably gotten away with just doing this one, but I thought, hey, I'm going to do both. I did look at the lower dog bone mount, the mount that's on the bottom, 
it looks fine. So I figure I won't do that one now. I'll do these two. If I still have some issues, maybe get underneath there, do the same thing, get my friend to rock it, Keller, get my grandson, rock it back and forth, and it's still doing the same thing, and we'll replace that. So yeah, that's that's where we're at now is taking this. So this just pulls up. That's all. So it's the guy I was watching, and I'll post the video to the one that I saw. He just lifted this up, but it doesn't seem to be okay to lift up like he did. So I might have to. I'm going to pause the video for a second and then do a little bit of stuff because I don't want to record too much of me doing nothing. So I'm going to pause it and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So what I found is that the mount that holds this wiring harness up, this plastic bridge, it's basically a bridge. There's like some mounts. They are... Um, this kind of, uh, I don't know what you would call it, I guess Christmas tree, some people call them Christmas trees. That's what it looks like, basically. They're like a reverse Christmas tree. And they're just pressed into the um, frame rail right here. So I just took a little pry bar and I went underneath and slowly just pried up. They came right up. So they're down here where the metal meets the plastic and this is shaped like a, a bridge. There's a footing here, it goes up. This is the top of the bridge and then it goes down. You just pry it up. So this all came up. So now I'm going to go ahead and get a little bungee cord here to help hold this back because these back bolts are kind of hard to get to. They're, they're tucked back in here. So what you're going to need, if you don't have one, to do this, and you could probably do it with a box wrench, um, but one of these swivel joints here should work really well. These are probably less than 4 or $5. I don't know, $5 at any parts place. This one's no fancy one, but yeah. And these are 16s. So before I loosen this, we're going to go underneath with the jack and we're going to jack this transmission up, keep the weight off of it so we can loosen all these bolts, pull them out and out, put the new one in. That's what we're going to do. Now, this is a DSG transmission. You can do this with a manual and a piece of 2x4. Just find a nice flat spot underneath here. And you're just barely going to take the weight off. Just a bit. And I should hold it up. And I've you start loosening these and it uh, starts, you, there's a lot of tension on these bolts. I'm going to do the back ones first and then these. If there's a lot of tension, then you might have to jack it up a little bit more. You'll see if it starts, if there starts to get to be a gap between this bracket and the top of the mount. So, uh, let's see here. There's my 3 8 inch drive right here. Pull up on this plastic thing. The back ones are the real thing, be the real 
bitch ones. I'm gonna screw it or anything. It's plastic. I'm gonna keep holding that over. Get in a better spot here. There we go. Okay, not too tight. Yeah, this plastic thing's got the pain in the butt on this mount. I don't know what the if this is just a all track thing with the four motion. Maybe the GGIs are easier to get to these. I don't know. These aren't that long. So make sure you don't get these mixed up with the new ones. These are my new ones. So you need a swivel joint to get in here. You could do it with a box wrench, but you're not going to have as much room, and it might take longer. So definitely could do it with a 16 box wrench. Okay. This one. Get my finger in there. I'm sure if you took more of these clips, these wire clips that are holding down, you could probably get in here a little bit better. Sorry, I'm blocking the camera. I, it's the only way I can get in here with two hands to try to thread this sucker out. There we go. Okay. Yeah, these other two are going to be really easy. It's almost a straight shot with these. But they're not like crazy. It's just a 3 8. If you had a little stubby 3 8 ratchet, this one has a nice long rod on it, so it's pretty easy. Which is one of my favorites. A little craftsman. Old craftsman. It's nice. Okay. Now we've got the 18, so I'll probably end up. And for some reason, I cannot find my half-inch 18. So we are going to use an adapter. These are probably going to be tighter. Oh, it's the wrong adapter. Well, let's just try it. Yeah, not too bad. 
definitely a definitely a tighter. Okay. Okay, so it's starting to go down. So there's as I'm loosening this last bolt, there's getting to be a crack and you can feel it. So what I'm gonna do is jack this up. A bit more. There we go. Now I got enough tension. So one thing super important, and I don't have the manual. All the manuals seem to be online. Now there's probably a Haynes manual for this. Is just to make sure that we're not moving the engine this way or that way. That's the nice thing about just trying to jack it up easy. Not moving this because these mounts need to be adjusted. I think I saw the humble mechanic. They were doing a golf R for Mark Five or Six. And there was a measurement that they had to take. It's like 10 millimeters, 14 millimeters. And they were just making sure that the spacing was correct. Um, but I've watched about three videos online. You know, SPC Euro, um, some of the other more popular parts websites. And they're just saying, just jack it up. Keep it where it's at. This should just bolt in back here. These are fixed. There would be a little bit of movement in here. You can see when I pull this one out. And then this leaves witness marks. So right here, if this were to move, you could take this old mount, put this bolt back in it up here, like on the engine or something, and let it sit in there. And you can see where it sits on here. But uh, I don't plan on moving this at all. It should just be staying exactly where it's at. I'm confident that it's going to be aligned just fine. This is a factory alignment. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm sure there's some folks like mechanics that are cursing me out right now. But, um, let's see. This one seems to be rubbing on the motor mount itself. So we did kind of move a little bit. So the good thing about this is that the, the, the motor mount, let's see. So when I get this back on, I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Might have to move this with a crowbar or something just a little bit. It moved over. Yeah, less than an eighth of an inch, like a sixteenth of an inch. Might be the way the jack is sitting on it. Make sure I'm still recording here. My phone's been doing weird things today. So yeah, me and Keller are recording this with his single cell phone. And uh, it's kind of janky, but it seems to be working. I think I can check this up. There we go. See how that just, that gap. That's what my problem was. There was still a little bit of weight on it. That's why these were sticking a little bit. Okay, these are garbage. And the motor mount's free. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is bad. <laughs> Let me see. Let me get on the other side of the camera. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't even know. It's not even barely even in there anymore. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so definitely the problem. Transmission mount shot. And that appears to be, this is the, the one thing that I'm a little bit confused about. Um, some of these have hydraulic fluid in them. And I think I can say that this one does because there's oil down in the bottom here. So when this failed, the hydraulic oil inside fell. Now I was trying to find the difference between them. It looks like Volkswagen makes a solid rubber and then they also make a hydraulic filled one. I think the ones I have, let me look at both of these here. 
and tear them. I think this is a hydraulic filled one. It looks identical to that one. I can't say for sure. Anybody in the comments that's done these and knows the difference between the hydraulic field and the solid rubber, let us know. Maybe there's a part number. Volkswagen has two of these on their site. One of them is for more like, I think it looked like for vehicles it would fit were Golf R, Audi, like S3. I think those might be solid rubber and the ones for an all track or a Jetta, regular Golf, might be these hydraulic ones. Um, that could be what this is. I'll do some more research to see if I can figure it out, but this is definitely going to be better than that one. That's the problem. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> okay. Share is still recording. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this one in. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to do some vacuuming. So I'm going to pause this and then I'll start back up. There's a bunch of bugs and pine needles and crap. Okay, so I just got done vacuuming all the pine needles and bugs and crap out of there. Um, I don't know if I can clean it. Well, it's like a really caked on. Well, and I don't know if that's from the hydraulic mount or if that's from um, rust proofing. It could just be rust proofing. So that could be a solid rubber mount. I, I just don't know. So, okay, so let's get her back together. Let's get the new mount in here. I said it only fits one way. And you can see when we when get to mounting this back up again and jacking it back up. I think my jack is slowly. No, it's not. Okay, so let's get these started you know, down and then we'll torque them. close-ups of this but this is pretty straightforward it's just getting these locked in this lower sections pinned so it can only go in one way it's got pins that hold it in place transmission did move backwards a little bit so I'm gonna to have to try to use a pry bar or something to get it back exactly where it needs to be there's witness marks on it from the old mount we will just match it identical to the witness marks so I'm sure the manual's got you know facts but I would assume from the factory it was adjusted properly to start with but it makes sense getting everything aligned up. I could see how it could wear out other suspension bushings if it's not. It makes total sense. Okay. That one started. And here we go. something in the past with a rubber glove and tape to keep them from swinging so easily. Okay, so there. Whew, 
be hot today, folks. This is where it's almost five o'clock, so it seems to be cooling off a little bit. But from 40 in rain two days ago to 90 is <laughs> for us people in the Pacific Northwest is a shock. But I've seen it hot in May before. I've lived in the Northwest all my life. It's not totally unusual. So now I gotta find torque spec for this. And I'll I'll post these torque specs in the uh, show notes. Okay, so we got transmission mount. Okay, those were the large nuts. 37 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. And this is where grandpa needs his glasses. When you get to be 60 years old, you need glasses, folks. 37. First, instead of pain the ass ones. Now, this might not be perfect torque, so any time with a torque wrench when you're using extensions or a swivel, it's not going to be perfect, folks, but it's going to be within probably one or two, probably, probably within two foot pounds. Um, you're just not going to get perfect torque. Let's see if I can get up a little bit on this one. Oh, there's my pan bolts. Okay, there we go. This bad boy. Come up as high as we can. You kind of use the. Uh, Extension to pull up on this plastic to get a better shot at her. Okay. These are all straight on, so. Okay. And then a quarter turn, 90 degree turn. So my breaker bar. Oh, I have to use my adapter for this one. So, 90 degrees. Okay, so 90 degrees is going to be right here. It's a quarter turn. So, obviously, all the way over to here, half, 360. So, it's quarter turn. And so, I'm, I'm starting getting tension here. So, I'm going to end up bringing it over even more. My swivel. What else do I when I'm not using half inch stuff? Okay. I think I got another one. Okay. That's what happens when you use cheap swivel to start with and a half inch breaker bar. <laughs> so let's see if I can. I'm lacking on some sockets. So I had a bunch of half inch stuff. And I am missing my 16 and half inch, so I'm trying to use this. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe this one. Try this. 
this one. This one looks a little bit more. It's about almost there. So just a, a hair more of a turn on this one. Okay, I'm calling that tight. Not rocket science, folks, but we're good. So now what we'll do, we can get straight on these other ones. I'm confident that that bolt is not going to go anywhere. I'm going to start here, so I only have to go to about here. Okay. You can kind of just feel like when it's tight, it's just tight, tight. You can almost feel what that's supposed to be. Okay, now we're going to jack this up. Okay, I got pretty far to come over here. Looks like I'll be able to do it by hand though. I'll go ahead and thread some in, get them started. Let's, let's look at those witness marks one more time. Okay. Looks like as long as I just pull that over, it's going to line up just perfect. Actually, that one might kind of just kind of hold it almost. You can't really see it. You're not going to be able to see this on the camera, but you know what I'm talking about. The old witness marks. Dirt over the years gets to where this isn't at, and you can see easily where those were at. And we're almost dead nuts on right there. But I could see how the Volkswagen manual would want you to do like certain measurements. Makes total sense, especially if you were putting in a brand new engine where you've you know, just coming in all sideways in different ways and you know um, if you had a uh, one of those hoists I have a hoist that goes over the engine so when me and Keller let me make sure I'm still recording here yes we are when me and Keller do his engine um, oh, that's just the bolt okay um, I'm going to show like where I got my hoist, where I got it. It, it works really good, especially for all these Volkswagens and Mark 1s to do transmission. Me and Keller have done so many transmissions in the last year. I think we've done four. We, we put his last transmission in probably an hour, easy, an hour, hour and 15 minutes, like nothing, like a, like a pit crew. Okay. 18. Get these nut down. You can see how this is moved, but to line up the witness mark, I kind of have to move that while I tighten one.
Let's see. Just a little bit. I'm gonna pull this back. Maybe just by hand. Oh yeah, no problem. Let me pull it by hand. So I might replace the dog mode mat. I have this feeling that. This one, let me get this one just snug so it doesn't move. That one looks dead on. That one's good. Okay, they're all dead and that's all they work. Here I'm still recording my phone. We got, I got to get some real cameras if we're going to keep doing this. Sorry, folks. It's about as best as I can get there with this cell phone, an old cell phone to boot. Okay, so the torque spec on this one is going to be 44 foot pounds. So Grandpa's going to get his glasses on. Next month, I'm going to buy me a whole bunch of new sockets. I got sockets 30 years old. Okay, half turn. So, we'll do the same situation. Start a little bit high here. We're going to end up right here. Let's go up a little bit higher and get our torque. When we're at this angle, we're going to want to be right about here. You can feel it when you're tight. You say pretty much get to a spot where not really going much more. Okay. All right, now. You saw what it looked like before. <laughs> it's moving, but not like it was before. <laughs> Big difference. Okay, now this out. <coughs> and this thing has a little Christmas tree in the back. Okay, that one's gotta go in first. It's gonna use kind of Sink right into place there. Bracket. little bolts so you can stick them out in your socket and kind of help guide them in. You know, when I first got this car and I've had lots of Volkswagens, and I thought, oh, this thing's going to be a nightmare to work on. They're not that bad, really. 
And I think the hardest thing I've done on any Volkswagen lately was Jonathan's 2010 Golf with a 2.5 liter. The oil filter housing was leaking and uh, wasn't crazy bad, but uh, it, yeah, it, it, it took me, I don't know how many hours that thing took me to do, but quite a while. And I have to tarp stuff like this. I just get these snug. But yeah, if you've got a 2.5 liter in your Volkswagen and it is just gushing oil, it's either coming out of the plate that covers, I believe it's like a vacuum pump. On his, it looks like it's almost like it was deleted. It just has a cover plate. The seals go bad on that. It drips all over the tranny. Um, but it, his was dripping a tremendous amount of oil straight down underneath the um, oil filter housing. Uh, you have to take the intake manifold off. Uh, it's not that bad, but uh, it's definitely a little bit time consuming. But fix the problem for sure. That's the goal, right? So let's make sure we're not still going. Sorry, folks, taking a little bit of time here. Okay, so that goes in. So now we can put the computer back in, get our plugs. So this lower one. had to go on here first. And then it had to get clipped in. And then this thing is what holds it in. Like it's in the right spot. Back a little bit. There it goes. Okay, and then just make sure they're latched in good. These are kind of cool plugs. You made a Volkswagen with these computer plugs. These are kind of sweet. You know, a little gear snugs that up. Okay, so that's done. So now we got our tray. So have to kind of finagle this. I think I have to end up going up on this bolt. The position here. Okay. Back to here. Seem to be lining up. Hmm. That's a little strange. Okay, let's see. These don't really all the other ones are lining up, except for that one it is not lining up. Wow. Okay. All right. That's not cool. I think though, there's only one way that motor mount went on. This one is. That one, unless I can. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pry that over or not. Maybe. It's weird. I'm wondering if it's something to do with this. Um, oh, I don't think that is going to line up. That is really weird. Let me look at the old one. Very bizarre. Well, I'll try to pry it over. I don't want to bother anything. If not, I'm just going to skip it. I hate to do that. 
Uh, but we've got two on this side and a, and a really solid one there. I don't see this ever going anywhere. Right huh. Yeah, there's a spacer back here. If I took that, maybe, maybe I can take that out. Let me, let me pull this back out. come out so that'll get us where we need to be I'm sure here. so that's a little strange but uh, not quite what I wanted to do but I think it does line up enough to get these back in so I think we're gonna have to eliminate that spacer not sure what the deal with that is but Yep, so it lines up now. So maybe some cars have it, some don't. It's not going to affect anything. There's two, there's three bolts holding us down, and this one just holds us against this. I don't see it like making noise or rattling or anything like that. So I, I think we're cool. It's in this weird spot. You guys are doing this, and what I'm talking about. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, I have that little Torx. So, what I'm going to do is. Uh, oh, wrong bolt. Oh, my gosh. Is. Oh, I got it up there. So, I'll add a little. There's a T30. Uh, it has to just kind of drop down in. But it's hard to get on there with the socket, so the, the T30 kind of helps and kind of go over a little bit and get started. And then once it gets started, it's fine. You can, you can probably get it in there with the socket. Just make sure it's pushed all the way back. And if you kind of lift this insulation blanket up a little bit, get the in there. And again, on stuff like this, I, I just, I just, 
shit ass on the title. I never reprint on anything. Okay, still recording. That's good. Let's see if I can get down in this little spot here. And we'll hook the battery up here in a second. Oh, oops. This was something just. What was that? Here's a little cover just came off here on the starter, a little plastic cover. And then don't forget this little clip, it just gets pushed down right there. Let's hook that up in a, well, I guess I might as well get that hooked up. Maybe to hook the positive, everything's good. Okay, let me finish it up. All right, so air box right here. So this is the, the weirdness about the air box. You got this pipe, so you gotta kinda get this pipe in this big little position here. That comes down, get this up out of the way. And you kinda gonna pivot this whole thing. Then the pipe gets stuck, so you just kind of reach down here, get the pipe in the right spot. Get this down there. Yeah, it, it's kind of funky, but once it goes in there, you just push down on it. And you can hook this back up. this okay. quick hate those things Volkswagen come on what the hell okay so transmission mount fixed again I'll show you the bad one the nastiness why the car was going kunk kunk so it was going that noise, or you could just feel it. Like it wasn't, like it was like a delayed engagement. And that's because the motor was going clunk. So, bad. Okay, I'll start working on the other side, the easy one. Go ahead and pause it and we'll move the camera. Okay, so now we've moved over to the driver's side. This one's gonna be much easier. Everything's fully accessible. We just need to move the coolant tank. And I think that might be it. So, start by moving the coolant tank. Um, so let's get rid of this, get this plug out. So, if you're not familiar with Volkswagen plugs, they suck. They suck like the other thing I told you sucked over here. These little things you have to compress. Little plastic hoses that after 15 years start cracking and falling apart. So, the best way to do these, they have a tool for this. If you want to buy the tool. I don't have one. I might buy one though. But with these Volkswagen connectors, the trick is, is you need to push them down first and then this little tab is going to get lifted up. So we push down, lift up. And so what that does, and I don't know if you can see, but once you get these off, 
take a look at it. So what this does is this allows the clip to pop off of this catch. And once you kind of understand it, so years ago when I was messing with these stupid things, I'd be pinching them. Like, what am I doing? What's going on? I'd be using a pick to get in there. But you have to, this one's, this one's new, so it like comes right off. But if there's some that's been on there for 15, 20 years, you want to press down, which gives you a little bit of play on this. And then you pull back on the tab. And then it slides right off. And then these, if I would, okay, so there's two tabs. They just need to be pressed in, and that pulls them back on the bottom, and then they lift out. And then this one goes the opposite direction, and it comes right up. Okay. Let's see. It looks like there's a clip down here. You can almost get it with your fingernail. There it goes. So there's a little clip down here. You probably not be able to see it. I'm going to get a close-up camera for if we start doing more videos. I'll get a close-up camera. But basically, this thing clicks in there. So all you have to do is lift down on this bottom piece with your fingernail, push down, and it allows this to come out. So it's right there. You push down with your fingernail. You can grab your fingernail in here like this, pull it down, and then this will open up. And then you can pin that back like that. <coughs> okay, we got uh, two sixteens. This was the only Volt Volkswagen didn't have. The torque is like minimal, so I'm reusing it. I wish they you know, had this one, but I'm not seeing this one ever coming out. It's really it just kind of holds this arm in here. So I am going to reuse that one. Not preferred, but Volkswagen didn't have it, and I didn't want to wait another half a week to get one. Those loose, and now we got our 18s. Okay, so before I did this, I got the jack underneath the oil pan. This car has a plastic oil pan, so I've put a fairly sized good board, nice oak board, piece of cutting board about that big, and then I put a, a foam kneeling pad for like uh, working in the garden underneath it. Um, I don't think the plastic pan would ever break, but it's plastic, you know. Um, I see a lot of guys changing that plastic one out for steel. I actually did. I, I said the other, at the beginning of the video, I hadn't had any problems with this car. I forgot that I had to replace the oil pan gasket. It was leaking at about 70,000. Uh, so I did that. Um, I don't think I'll ever hit it. We don't off-road this thing very much at all. And I'm really careful about clearance. So I'm just going to leave it. 218s. And the same thing's gonna happen when I loosen these. It's probably gonna drop. Yep. So I'm gonna jack it up a little bit more. It's actually raising the car up. And if you look while you're jacking, you can actually see the motor mount move up a little bit because they're nice and loose now. And again, on this side, you know, we got witness marks, and I'm just going to copy them straight over. Um, not sure if I'm having to jack that up. I think we're as high as we need to be.
And what you can do, and I might do it on this one, I should have probably done it on the other one. Just take a little marker, make a couple dots on here. Kind of see exactly where it's at. Can't quite see if I can get in. I can't get in there as an angle, but see if I, I'll just draw a little line around this corner that will that way I've drawn on my edges and that's fine. Okay. So this mount I know for sure is hydraulic and you can see that here, this squishy, there's oil in there. It's like they fill it through that little port right there. So this is definitely a hydraulic enhanced mount. And I'm sure the one we'll take out is gonna end up having the same thing. Uh, I think that the transmission one might have been, not sure, so. Somebody's gonna have to do the research on that one to find out. I think the one I didn't get is not the one for the Golfer and GTI. I think that's the solid rubber one. Put these over here. So make sure you get the right one. And I'm sure that uh if I need to come up, let's see. Yeah. Let me come up to about there. So, yeah, on the motor mount thing, just order the ones that you, for your car. And uh, pick. I'll go back on the Volkswagen site, and if I find out more information, I'll, I'll post it in the show notes. Just did the serpentine belt on this about two weeks ago. Easiest serpentine belt I've ever done. So, yay, Volkswagen mechanics doing the right thing on the serpentine belt on these cars. This stud has this uh, bolt has a little stud on it. That must be for a different market, TDI, something weird that actually mounted to that. Um, so you would probably wouldn't need to buy this one. It was a couple dollars more expensive, but uh, you you could just get the the one that's on the other side. It'd be fine. Nothing goes to it. Okay, so hydraulic, so you can might be able to see, that's why I think this one might be bad. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that thing's supposed to be. Obviously it hasn't ruptured, so that's probably a good, idea, good thing. When I was wiggling the engine and looking at this mount, it didn't look terribly bad. This one's got what looks like more rubber and this is more like a nylon on this one so not sure what the difference is you can you can see the play on this let's see side to side is pretty good let's see how this one is this one's got about the same amount of movement but the movement this way on this one up and down this way seems way better than this one so, not sure, but, you know, I thought, heck, let's go ahead and replace it. I, I did notice, though, big difference on the height between here and here and here and here. This one's about, oh, a little over a half inch. And this one, especially when, it, when the engine weight was on it, it was almost down to the bottom, probably less than a quarter inch. So, I think it's good for replacing this. 
And I'll take a peek down here at the witness marks. Okay, same thing. You can clearly see the witness marks on this one. Uh, I'm just gonna suck out a little bit of stuff out of here real quick. <laughs> seem to have a, uh, this one has a little bit more play than the other one, I guess. Not much. Maybe when the bolts get on there, probably not. So I'm going to put this side bolts in here first. This one's going to come up. What I'm going to do is jack the car up now. Wow. That's weird. It's going to end up probably pulling this over. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down just a hair. It's kind of going up at a weird angle. So let's let the bolts kind of pull this one up. We'll go ahead and leave these loose for now. You know, and I ain't opened the factory. I mean, was this thing set up like perfect from the factory? It's hard to say. I would think so. So this bolt is kind of rubbing. I don't know if it's because I don't have it quite jacked up all the way, but it would. It was kind of like going up at a weird. Angle, so I thought, well, let's just thread these up and just kind of let them pull, and I'll just jack a little bit on each side. Jack just a little bit. You can see they're, they're kind of tight on here. Oh, okay, I just kind of wiggle this up a little bit, kind of helped a little bit, but I'm going to end up having to put this one on here soon. So I think what we'll do is, uh, you can tell, you can actually kind of move it. Oh, okay. The mount, you can move the mount and get it to thread in easier. There we go. We'll get some good thread on this one, I think. really close and then I'll be able to use my pry bar because it definitely looks like it moved a little bit. Could just be where I had the jack underneath there.
kind of getting easier here though. The more I get this closer to the other bracket, the bracket mounted to the engine, it seems like it's getting easier. Oh, maybe because we've lifted this up quite a bit. Better get this one in. Like it's too much. I will torque this down to spec. It's just reusing it. It was only like 15, what was that? Uh, 15 foot pounds. I don't know how you could stretch a bolt, 15 foot pounds. Is it filming? Yes. Sorry, the video is kind of long, but I thought start to finish kind of situation. I see a lot of videos I watch, and people like they'll do a certain section and then just cut out the most important part, and you're like, whoa, 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 what happened? What, what did you do there? How, how did you end up doing this? How did you do that? And I just get so frustrated. So I'm trying to just go start to finish on this thing and. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this up to where I can move it because my marks are off a little bit. Hopefully it's really grabbing it. I can take my pry bar. So we can manipulate this thing a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if this motor mount is going to let me have that much. Right, let me loosen it a little bit. I'm going to tighten it too much. And I might have to release the back here. We'll see. This might be a little bit smaller than this one here. That's kind of strange. We'll see. Yeah, this, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to move it. Maybe, maybe. Let me play around a little bit more. Looks different. I don't think there's any way that this this looks a little bit different than the factory one as far as how it's sitting. Yeah, it's it's cast different. I'm assuming that it's lined up since the engine just jacked up. We took the mount off. So I'm not able to use these witness marks on this one because this is completely longer and, and fatter at the same time. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and torque it down. Um, I don't think there's any other way I can do it. I, I, I'll, I'll take some pictures of these two when I'm done with this video so you can see what I'm talking about. But definitely a different casting. Let me just run these down. See, it's when we drive the car, if there's any kind of weird. If anybody's a Volkswagen mechanic and they're uh, cursing me out right now and I'm not measuring things or doing things right, I'm fine about criticism, you know. Just let me know in the comments and uh, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong and I will come back and I'll edit this video. 
change things up because I'm I'm okay with saying <laughs> I'm wrong. I have no problem with that. I'm, I'm wrong a lot of times for sure. So when you're married for 30 plus years to my second wife, um, yeah, you you learn to acknowledge when you're wrong. Otherwise, you're not going to have a good relationship. Okay. Oh. Grandpa glasses out. Trust my torque wrench. Okay, we're going to do these first. Okay, engine mount. Mount to frame rail. 30 foot pounds. Work on these aren't that high because this sits right on here and it really just needs to hold it in place because it's sitting on top of it. And we took all these down and then do each one a quarter turn. This one, the large ones, top of the these are 44, like the transmission one. So we're about right here. We're going to come to about right here. It's got this breaker bar to garage sale. I'll brag about my garage sale plan here for just a split second here. So I got a bunch of stuff, but got these two and a bunch of other really cool stuff. 15 bucks. They aren't like Snap on or Matco, but this is a Craftsman. This one's, yeah, it's probably an Amazon thing. Tekton. So I'm, I'm sure it's. 30 bucks, 40 bucks, easy. Yeah, I like a garage sale score. down to 15. We'll see. Maybe. I have to use my small one. Oh, oh yeah. I think it does go there. I gotta get this one calibrated. I think I'm off just a little bit on this torque wrench, but within a few different foot pounds. Yeah. That's it on that one. 
Okay, water bottle. Just gonna clip back in. Oh shoot, that's that clip. Okay, <laughs> so now if I I'm gonna open that back up. I'm gonna pull this open, that lower hose pops in there and goes clip. And this I need to feel like I'm hitting. Oh, there's a little oh, okay. I see. Just gonna come back out with this again. There's a little thing in the G. Okay. There's a little pin here, and then, then these clip in. Okay, all right. Let's wiggle this a little bit. Let's see what it feels like now. Oh yeah, it's so much different. I mean, the engine still moves, but that's just normal engine movement. But yeah, I think that definitely fixed my problem 100%. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, after installing the two motor mounts yesterday, that did definitely fix the problem. The car is completely fixed now. I thought the dog bone mount might be compromised too, but we just got underneath there and it is solid and tight so there is still normal engine movement um but it's just absolutely normal but as you can see here this is what the major problem was was this transmission mount it is just you can just literally say and that's what was making the clunky noise when i was shifting so yeah it's nice to have that fixed so um i'm gonna start the car do it put it in forward and reverse and you can just see normal engine movement on these So that's just normal engine movement. So these are stock mounts. So you can see the, the engine's still moving a little bit. Um, obviously, high performance mounts is going to limit the amount of engine movement and engine, engine travel. But I want to keep this car stock. My wife drives it. I drive it. I want it to be quiet. I don't mind a little bit of engine movement. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the fix worked great. G got everything running. Uh, super excited about that. So the next thing we're going to start working on is the Beetle. So then the beetle, I'll move over. Yeah, yeah. So the next thing we're going to do with the beetle is the transmission flush. Uh, well, we got the car, it's got 79,000. Don't know if the transmission's ever been flushed. I want to keep flushing it. Uh, Volkswagen recommended lifetime fills on these, and I'm hearing horror stories about the OM1 automatic transmission. Uh, valve bodies um, starting to go bad on them and I think it's because people are running dirty transmission oil and it's messing up with the, the valve bodies and making them stick and causing this horrendous problem. So we're going to get that flushed and then after that, uh, a few weeks after that, I'm going to do the timing belt, serpentine belt, water pump, um, camshaft seal, crankshaft seal. Um, everything on the passenger side of the engine, so we'll film that. And then we're just going to keep working on Keller's ABA 2 liter build. He found a kit. Where did you find that at? What is Marketplace. it? Marketplace. It's on Marketplace. It's, it's a 16 valve swap kit complete. Swap kit complete. So it comes with everything to timing belt. Uh, run the serpentine belt off of the ABA engine. So 16 valve, timing belt, the wide timing belt with serpentine belt set up. What else did it come with? A uh, short block and a gasket kit for the short block. 
Yeah, so seven hundred dollars for all that, and it had fuel rail, right? Yeah, the fuel rails too. Fuel rail, because it's hard to made up a fuel rail to the sixteen valve head. So we're uh, going to acquire those parts, and we're going to just keep making videos. Um, we're working on trying to get some better uh, video editing software. We're looking at some cameras on Amazon, maybe some microphones, trying to get maybe like a little GoPro or something for close-ups. So bear with us. I know the quality of the videos are really kind of crappy right now, but we're going to keep working at it. We want people to put comments into the comments and say, hey, this, you know, your videos suck or we like what you're doing. Keep, keep doing it. Uh, know if we're going in the right direction, wrong direction. Uh, we will, on the video of the Alltrack motor mounts, uh, we're going to put in all the uh, links to the parts. Uh, we've got some uh, scans of the receipts from Volkswagen for the fasteners, um, some other information. So we'll plug those into the video somewhere. And if you guys don't find the links or there's something that I forgot, you can go to any of those um, scans that we did and we'll uh, post them up onto the video and you'll be able to pause it maybe take part numbers So we'll make sure when we do that that I'm able to pause it zoom in get part numbers. So yeah Yeah, so we're going from there, and uh, appreciate you uh, watching our channel, and uh, we're just going to keep at it. Thank you.